Okay, let's first check what happens if we increase the standard deviation of the error term u uh, from 1 to 2. We keep the sample size at 20, our original baseline value. I run again a thousand times the sim and s function. Uh, now every time we have a, a higher standard deviation of the error term and um, we, uh, we can just compute the standard deviation of beta 1 hat. And we see now it's 0.49 and um, the base and it was 0.23 so it seems to be roughly twice as large. So having a higher standard deviation of our error term, basically higher standard deviation means it, it fluctuates more the error term, makes our estimation less precise. Our standard error of beta 1 hat goes up. I mean, maybe we can also draw the histogram. If you look at it, basically here we have larger values on the x-axis. Um, so this seems intuitive. We have basically more noise. Uh, uh, the error terms can be larger in absolute values. We can less precisely estimate. Um, let's also um, take a look what happens if instead we uh, increase the standard uh, deviation of the explanatory variable from 1 to 2 and setting back the standard deviation of the error term to 1. Um, I again run the replication, uh, I replicate this one a thousand times, can also draw the histogram, the mean will again be close to 1 uh, and I compute the standard deviation and now it's 0.12 so it's again only half as large as our baseline standard deviation. That's our baseline was 0.23, now we have 0.12. So it seems to be the case that if I have a higher standard deviation of our explanatory variable, then I can more precisely estimate uh, beta 1. This may, on first time you may have thought differently, but it makes completely sense. So think of the extreme case that the um, standard deviation of x would be a zero, then, then x would be always be a constant value. But, but actually the beta 1, what it measures here, it measures the effect that the change of x has on y. But to estimate this effect of x on y, I need some variation in x. I mean, if x always would have a constant value, um, I, I couldn't um, estimate it at all. Um, let me uh, look at this and it basically returns an NA on x because I need variation in x to, to estimate how x affects y. And if this variation is very small, then I cannot really very precisely estimate um, the effect of x on y because basically, uh, now here we see a very, an estimate that's very different from the true value of 1 uh, because uh, the main reason for the fluctuation in y is the, uh, the error term and I have only this little fluctuation in x that doesn't help me really to, to um, uh, filter out how x affects uh, y given this relatively large noise. But the more variation I have in x, uh, the more precisely I can estimate the impact uh, uh, that x has on y. So the more precisely I can estimate this coefficient beta 1. Now here we basically got an idea about the standard error of beta 1 hat because we uh, repeated the simulation estimation uh, a thousand times and we got a thousand different values of beta 1 hat and therefore could make this plot and compute the standard deviation of beta 1 hat. But what if we only have a single data set and that's what we typically have. If we only have uh, here 20 observations of y and 20 of observations of x, can we then also kind at least estimate the standard deviation of beta 1 hat? Can we know from a single sample how precise we can estimate beta 1 hat, or is this not possible? Make a guess.